folks i'm back okay so welcome to cartoon chores it's uh, steve jennings here from grass horse and um i think everything looks hunky-dory i think you can actually hear me this time after the other start so that's we're making progress right you can actually hear me um so anyway we're going to start working today on a puppet mover and in the puppet mover we're going to have we're going to basically take this little doodad here and then move it back and forth just a rotation, probably down here at the, like a pivot point down here at the bottom. And there's a little bit of weight to this. And um, we're just gonna basically use like a metal geared airplane servo to, to drive it. Um, it should be okay uh, with, you know, being geared right off of here. We could do, I think we probably, you know, I was thinking at first, well, maybe we should make a step down gear right off the bat. And now I'm thinking, well, Let's first just make it work with this gearing and then then make it a little like gearbox or something to, to step it down. Because I think this, can, this rotates 180 degrees. I don't think this thing needs to rotate much more than 90. Um, but anyway, we're just gonna build some stuff in Blender um, to do that. And I don't really know how we're gonna do it yet. I have a, just have a, kind of have a hunch. So anyway, um, Let's see here, I got a warning. Audio bit rate is too high, okay. Well anyway, <clears throat> let's, let me show you um, where we are currently at with the servo that we've been working on. All right, so here you can see a turntable of the top of the, the servo that I, I did yesterday. Unfortunately, the video didn't come out. I think I made it through about half of the video and then it bombed out and I didn't recognize it and so I went ahead and finished the whole, finished the whole servo horn there, but that servo horn should be useful for us today. It is to scale, and uh, and it is a you know it's a representation of of uh, of this one right here that I made. Okay, so anyway, that's where we're at with that. Um, we have. This file here, which is the servo file, um, we're not going to be working in the servo file. I have a new one called a, a puppet mover. I'm trying to think in my head whether I want to just save this as into the puppet mover file or if I want to you know, append this stuff into there. You know, in a normal production environment, I'd say append for sure. But I think just I'm just gonna just save as and start this as like puppet mover one. So let's back out. Not texture. We'll call it this puppet mover. All right, and so now we are not going to do all this in rendered view, of course. And so this is all crazy looking. It looks like some art project. So we're just gonna do it in solid mode for now. So this is to scale in millimeters, okay? Obviously, um, what we, would not, we're, we should not model it in this orientation. I would take, there's a lot of like parts here that may not be even necessary. I made them just because I wanted to make a, make the, take it to the full uh, level of complexity of the object. Well, these are, are these selecting? Okay, it looks like they are. Okay, they are all selecting. I'm gonna do a shift S and I'm gonna go to cursor to center. I'm going to rotate in X, I think negative 90. Undo that. There's something I missed, which is that washer. I didn't name it. That's why I missed it. R, X, negative 90. 
go hit five of the number pad to go to orthographic. And I can see I at least need to move this up at least a centimeter, if not maybe a centimeter and a half. So let's move it up to G, Z, 1.5. So there's that. Now, <clears throat> things to take into consideration. I can delete that little dude for sure. I am going to name that before I move. move on. I know it's not named in the other one. That would have been nice if I had named it correctly to begin with. HS645MG underscore washer. Okay, there it is. And so in thinking about how this rotates, we want to make sure that the, this rotates, that this has space um, that we can control how far this distance is off of this ground plane, right? We want to control where this is actually at up and down. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so maybe that's even the first thing to build. You know, maybe that's the first thing to build is maybe this like some sort of like rail system almost. I was looking at rail systems earlier today, like rack mount rails. Maybe I can make a little, little rail system that goes up here like that so that we can control how high this is off the ground. And then do, and then just do like a little base here that we could then maybe screw into, like screw in or, or bolt in or something like that to a um, piece of wood. It's just an idea so far. So let's do a shift A. And we'll start with a cube. And we're going to go G, Z, 1 to move it up to the top. We're going to tab into it. Hit Z. Vertically select A, B. And uh, I think we're going to go to like uh, Shift S, cursor center is still there. And we're going to select three cursor. We're going to S, Z, zero. And we're going to go G, Z. Let's make it. Uh, that was two. I'll do that. G, Z, 0.5. So five millimeters thick. So I don't work in millimeters, so I'm going to have to like pretty much pull out this thing all the time. Measure it. You know, that's not, that's not too bad, actually. Five millimeters. One, f ten or one centimeter would be maybe at the biggest. So, yeah, let's, we'll start with that. And let's see here. Z, tab out, A. Let's kind of like center this over that, over the, the origin. So let's take B, select all this, deselect that. I don't know how it got selected. Deselect that. And we're in three. G, Y, just gonna move it in Y and constrain it there. It's probably good enough for now. We'll tab into this, A, A, Shift S, cursor center, S, Y, and we can scale it out until it seems right. Let's make it the depth so the, so the full servo could sit in there. SY holding shift, pointing a little bit. Okay, A, B. Well, before I do that, escape. Let's make some of these non selectable. I don't want to, I'm not going to want to select the camera node. I'm not going to want to select the lamp for now. Um, yeah, that's probably it for now. B, the box select. 
Oop, time out. B. A, B, box select. Come on. G, Y. Cool. This is looking as if it should be around four millimeters wide. It's just a little bit shy of that, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make it four millimeters wide. So uh, shift S, cursor center, B for box select. Um, S, Y, zero, G, Y, two. And this one here, do a S, Y, zero. And I'm gonna add a mirror modifier. And we're gonna mirror it in Y. I'm gonna pull out that face right now before it causes trouble. And Z, so now, we've, now we're there. Now that I say that I made that like that, I don't know that I want the, this part mirrored back here. I do, I for sure wanna mirror it in X. Hmm. Undo, undo, undo. Come on. Go, go away. And so then uh, GY minus two. Let's loop cut slide here. Z, A, there's that. B, X, vertices. Okay, and mirror and X. Cool. This is so dense. I'm gonna take some of these down. Maybe even hide some of these things. We don't need the screw heads. Servo horn's good. We don't need the gear. Don't need the washer. Servo horn, horn or that screw head. Select this one. Let's take the view down to one. Same with this one. Okay, there, that's more manageable. All right, so right now it looks like we are, we will need to come out here probably again, at least another four, if not a little bit, you know, come out and make this four millimeters wide because that's about what this size is here. And um, we're gonna go ahead and make it like 4.1 millimeters wide on both sides. So, okay. So let's tab into that. Get our face. S, X, zero, G, X, 2.05. See what that does. Yeah, that's cool. That works. Now I'm gonna do an E for an extrude, escape. And then let's um, extrude out at least to here. Let's extrude out a little bit more than that. So that's one, two, so that's two, two millimeters left, less than one full. So two and a half millimeters left, less. And so G, X, point seven five. There we are. All right. Cool. So now we're gonna do a loop cut and slide on this side. Boop, zero. And um, partially done two of those, it looks like. So G, Y, seven, under, uh, G, Y, point seven. Cool. And uh, so we select this one, shift S, oops, shift S, cursor selected. Now select this one, S, Y, zero, G, Y, uh, minus mm, three, G, Y, minus point three.
All right, so now that I'm looking at this, how high do I want that to go? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just make it ten. I know this is a hundred and twenty millimeter. From here to here. Doing a little math here. Looking at this, that's that high is eighty. A hundred. This is a hundred and fifty. A hundred and fifty looks pretty good actually. So let's do that. Extrude, so E for extrude, escape, G, Z, 15. All right, cool. Now, It would just be darn handy <laughs> if from here to here were the <clears throat> um, this were consistent all the way up, then we could move them up and down wherever they need to be. Now that doesn't look like that is well. That is pretty close, actually, isn't it? There to there. I was going to say that it didn't look like that maybe this was made in millimeters. But now that I look at it closer, I think it might be. So let me do a little bit of measurement. Wow. It looks like it's 10 millimeter. There's a 10 millimeter difference, so I think it's done in, a ten, in millimeters. So, that said, let's do this. We're going to do a loop cut slide here somewhere. Okay, select, uh, select, mm -hmm. select those, shift S, cursor selected. Alt, right click that, S, Z, zero, G, Z, point five. I don't know that I want to have that directly on the bottom there. So let's move it up like one, one more millimeter, G, Z, one, oops, GZ.1, all right. And then I can do another one up here, a loop cut slide. And shift S, cursor selected, go here, SZ0, GZ.5. G Z point five. All right. I'm gonna tab out and I'm gonna Well don't do it yet. I won't do it yet. It's bothering me that this is not centered here yet. And I think it's good a good idea to not bottom this out and have this laying right on here because that could be a, a, a heat buildup and just melt melt gears inside and stuff. And I think it's a metal gear one, but you know what? Let's make it for any um, <clears throat> any type of servo so that it wouldn't heat up and melt because, because of the heat that's trapped around it. <clears throat> All right. So now, I guess I was working from the back the whole time. Huh. So now we're over here. How big do I want to make those holes? <clears throat> Don't have one of those.
those screws with me, do I? Let me look. I don't have one of those with me, but I do have some standardized, or actually have some of these quick release doodads that I think people like to use for servos. These little things, I've seen these used before where you can push this in and it clamps the servo in place, right? So let's actually uh, make it so that we can use this little guy. All right, <clears throat> so let's get a rough measurement. This is kind of like what I did yesterday with, with it, that we understand that what we're making here is a part that I'll probably apply a subdivision surface to just to make the holes round, and that by doing the subdivision surface, our precision modeling it will no longer be precision wherever there are things like, like holes and stuff like that. And so that we'll have to then conform those to a higher resolution geometry um, to get the holes right. So anyway, <clears throat> here's where we're at. That looks like it's a four millimeter. All right, so we're gonna do a loop cut and slide right here. Zero, hit Z, let's hit Z. So you can kind of see what's going on here. We know that's gonna be four millimeters, so that means Let's throw one here, one here, one here, one here, and then try and make it like an eight, maybe like an eight hole. I like that. So we're gonna make one here, I think. Oop. So shift S, cursor selected, and select this one. I can S, X, zero, G, X. Um, we want it to be four millimeters, so we point one. S, X, zero, G, X, minus point one. Did I get that totally wrong? <laughs> That's totally wrong. I need to do one more. G, X, point one. G, X, minus, point two. G, X, point one. <clears throat> it is early here. <laughs> That's not much of an excuse, but it is early. Okay, so. Select this one, shift S, cursor selected, S, Z, zero, G, Z, point two. S, Z, zero, G, Z, minus, point two. Whoops. Escape. Undo, G, Z, minus, point two. <clears throat> Shift S, cursor selected, S, Z, zero, enter, G, Z, point two, and then S, Z, zero, G, Z, minus, point two. All right, cool. So there we go, there we are. I'm gonna hit period on that, so it'll rotate around that part there. While we're at this, um, tab M, let's move this just to one, and then let's just look at one. Okay. So now, I can select these doodads and delete them. X. Faces, cool. 
and select this and this. Oop, go to one, spin 360 degrees. The steps of eight steps. <clears throat> AA, W4. Make sure everything's looking good. Yep, cool. Now let's uh, bring these in to where they need to be. Hmm. Alt M, last. Alt M, last. Alt M, last. Same thing here, spin. <clears throat> and looks good. Alt M last AA escape. Undo. W4. Remove eight vertices. Cool. This one here. Alt M last. Cut and slide right here. Zero. Okay, and cursor is selected. And now select all of this and do a SX zero. SX zero. All right. <clears throat> Now, I know that from here to here, that this is essentially, uh, this length right here is the correct length for what we want um, between the, where, where the next hole should start up here, right? We're not gonna go through and do that for every single hole, but we probably need to go through and make this the same height, make this the same height as that. So. Okay, so I'll uh, just watch. <laughs> All right, so this is a 0.3. So it's 0.3 millimeters there. Um, we're gonna select this, select that, shift S, cursor selected, A, Z, B, box select everything, and S, Z, zero, then G, Z, 0.3, Roop. Okay, and so now this is a, a, a unit that we can just broop all the way up. So let's turn off the length. X faces Z. Let's face select. And B. There we are. Okay, so now, is it duplicate? Extrude, insert, make edge, subdivide, loop cut, slide, offset, duplicate, spin, 
screw, select knife, knife for grip, bisect. It is a dupe. I mean, I know I can just go and I can, I can, I can do a shift D on it and then do a G, Z, five. Ah. G, Z, point five. G, Z, point five. So G, Z, one on it. I suppose I could do a shift D on that and then do G, Z, one. And then A, B, do this. So this is basically the, the second space. So shift D, escape, G, Z, two. And uh, shift D, escape, G, Z, two. Shift D, escape, G, Z, two. A, B, mop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Shift D, escape, G, Z, eight. Did that work? <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay, well that's working. Um, then let's up here. These will go to edge select. Hit Z if you want. Ring select that. And uh, if I just hit F, it makes one big gigantic face. that that come on so we're going to do e for extrude escape gz.5 all right there's that then here e for extrude shift s cursor center s x 0 then X, and we're just going to remove that face that was there that we used. All right. So we now have 16, 17 spots, I believe. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 holes. Let's put that in two, and you have nine spaces and if you look at the height of it it what is the height tab out the height is uh, 19 centimeters it's a little bit higher cool though <clears throat> I want to add a support here. So let's do a loop cut and slide right there. Zero. And select this. Shift S. Oh, come on. Shift S. Cursor selected. Alt right click that. S Y zero. G Y point four. All right, so that'll be roughly the same thickness as these doodads. Okay, and so then let's go up here to one of these. So this is one, two, three, four. So maybe oh yeah, do A A W four. Make sure all those vertices are. The duplicate vertices are removed. There's some weird ones here. Look, oh, let's drag. I wish I didn't, I wish I saw this before I did all that duplicating. But anyway, let's solve the problem instead of complaining. Um, 
one, shift S, cursor selected, Z, and a box select, box select, box select. Good time to switch the pen. B. Come on, rascal. B. Oh, I should have known better. <laughs> All right, so let's see if I can do this with a B. Uh, control shift, can I do that? Can I do a control, B shift, and then select, deselect? How about, can I do two? B shift, D, yay, hooray. So B, oh, that's caps lock. Shift, B, shift. There we go. B shift. All right. So now thirty vertices. Okay. How did that one not get done? And so why do I not make videos that are much shorter? Because actually th things like that are really important because you're making things and you make mistakes and sometimes you don't know how to fix them because all the content that you've seen shows you how to do something just perfectly tutorial wise. And X, Y, Z, you're gonna go through it and you do these things and you have this result. But well, nothing's like that, you know? There's nothing out there or they don't, they sure don't. We never get a project where it's like, do X, Y, Z and complete it. No. Every single time we do a project, it's different, and we have to figure our way through it, and we have to do like creative problem solving. And if you're, if you're not learning how to creative problem solve along the way, you then just are going through, and you can only do the most basic things. And so it's a matter of trying to learn how to, how to figure, figure things out as you're going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so then here... I'll do then as loop cut and slide zero, and then another loop cut and slide zero. I don't know that five millimeters right here will be enough for, for clearance for those things that come through, but I'm, I'm hoping it will be. So, all right, shift S, cursor selected, select this, S, Z, zero, G, Z, uh, 0.25. So this, SZ0, GZ minus 0.25. Cool. All right, so then hopefully now, and this one, that means that down here, we'll probably need a more, one more cut here. Now select these two down here. Select those two X faces. Then up here, wherever that doodad was, I believe it here. 
Is that it there? That's it. Okay. I'm going to do X faces. Hmm. A little challenging here. So I'm going to select that one to that one. I'm going to hit F. This to this F. This to this F. This. This. Oop. Not that one. That to that. This. don't know if I like how this is looking. It's way different than what I, in my head, I had. What I had in my head, <laughs> this looks so ridiculous. <sighs> okay. I guess it would have worked if it were 45 degree angle, it would have been nice. But it's not a 45 degree angle, so it tapers in a really odd, ugly way. So we're gonna undo, see how much of you can bring back. Cool. All right. Hmm. I'm thinking, now I'm kind of wondering if, yeah, I think I got it, I think I got it. Instead of doing a diagonal, let's do one up to cross, then do a diagonal on that, and see if that'll look better. So take the, these two, or really, let's take this one, Shift S, cursor selected there, Take these two, E for extrude, S, Z, zero. We'll take that up there. Then we're gonna select this guy. Or actually, let's select this. And Shift S, cursor selected. Select these two, E, escape, S, Y, zero. Okay, groovy. And we're getting there. Cursor selected for that. E, escape, S, Z, zero. Faces in there to delete that we don't need. Okay. I do think that this edge can be dissolved. You can just dissolve that edge. Mesh, edge. I almost never dissolve edges, but I want to show you that it can be done. Freestyle, rotate, bevel, edge, edge, edge slide, loops, rings. Because oh. I don't think you can just do it. It's not just delete. Delete, dissolve edges. There we are. Doink. Delete, dissolve edges. <clears throat> and that does not leave a bunch of things around. So a lot of times I'll go through and I'll just merge stuff because maybe I don't want to go through and do one big, huge, long, like dissolve like that. But that worked well this time. So I 
I am thinking like, should I have just gone ahead and run that all the way up there and then had one middle spot where it um, had a support in here, you know, do cross bracing in there or whatever. I don't know if I have an opinion yet. I do think that the footprint, it'd be nice to bring this footprint out a little bit wider. E escape. GX, and then let's take it out. Two. I am gonna delete this and move this up and then we'll figure out where the, uh, figure out where it should be at. Z, B, so let's go to the side. So G, Z, could be another eight. G, Z, two. That's interesting. Just selected there. Go here, select this. E escape, SY, zero. Then X faces, A, A, W, oops. Come on, rascal. A, W, ah, W, four. Remove two verses. Okay, oop, two. Okay, so it's not wide enough there then. Well, okay, well, let's go here. Shift S, cursor selected. Doop, doop, doop. And SX0, AW4. Removed, zero. Hmm, I just didn't select that one. SX0, AW4. Okay, great. I suppose that lets us also, we probably do wanna, so now that I've, I went and dissolved that one, we are gonna add one back. Loop, cut, and slide, zero. So select this, shift S, cursor selected, like that. S, Y, zero, G, Y, point, Five. I think it was already there. Okay. Shift S, cursor select center. E, escape. S, X, zero. X, delete the face. A, 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 W, four. Nothing to remove because it's mirrored. All right. Cool. So that allows us to output this and move the servo up and down so we can find the right. It's not, you know, you could put slides in there, but I don't think there, I think the integrity would be very poor. And um, for sure now we can select this doodad here, and we can do a loop, cut, and slide here, and go zero, and that's the spot where we need to add the cross support. So 
So, I'm gonna patch this back up again. Come on. Edge, edge, shift S, cursor center. No, shift S, cursor selected. Select those two, S, Z, zero. A, A, W, four, remove 10 vertices. Loop cut and slide here, zero. Here, zero. Okay. I believe it was 2.5 both direct, 0.25 both directions. And this is the center. So SX, SZ, zero. GZ, 0.25. SC0, GZ minus 0.25. Shift S, cursor selected. Loop cut and slide, SC0. Shift S, cursor selected. Loop cut and slide there, SC0. Hmm. Shift S, cursor selected. This is not centered. I see zero. Now it is. Mm. Cursor selected there. X faces. Doop doop. E escape. S. Y zero. X. The face is a, so it's a W4, remove six vertices, okay. Now is this conducive to the most easily 3D printed part? No, it's not, but. But it's at least you know getting an idea of how how we do it. Maybe these are parts that we you know print out print out these pieces and then glue it together. I don't know. Because there'd be a whole lot of support in here, and a lot of you know there'd be support in each of these holes, and getting those holes right would be tough. Some ways would be easier just to you know trim this off here, and have the, these supports be on the bottom, and then have it build it up this way. But and now I think about it, <clears throat> what's to really stop us from just filling in the sides on these? I mean, I guess the heat there's still there's still air space around it. There's still gaps for air. Yes, it's too tight. This is too tight because. Um, the way those things splay out, they need a little bit more room than maybe that. Like these might be tight there. So if I split this in half and then just run on this outside run, like leave a, leave a gap in there, like let's leave this here, but then split this in half and then fill that in. That then at least makes it easier to print. One, two, three, right? So one. Two, three. Do this one first. Shift S. Cursor selected. 
SX0. Jeff Desk, Crusher Selected. Zero. Oops. Faces, delete those. Select these. Actually, before I do that, select where I want it to go to. Now I'll select the faces. E for extrude, escape, S, Y, zero. Groovy. Now I'll select the next place I want to go to. Escape SY zero. Now I don't want those faces, so I'm going to X delete those faces. I'm going to hit A W four, and it removes duplicate vertices. So now we have a cap on there. Okay. I think we are going to do the same thing on this side. So now I'm going to do a loop cut and slide down through here. Um, I want to make sure that it is. One and a quarter millimeters. Woof, that's thin, man. That's a thin little wall. I think two millimeters is more what I'm thinking. Maybe we can pull that off. <clears throat> so shift S, cursor selected. Select this, should go all the way around. And then, whew, doing some funny things there. Okay, whatever. Let's see what it does. Um, SX0, GX minus point two. Heck, that does not work. Undo. What I think we need to do then is, I think we need to bring it out this way two millimeters. Something funny going on there. Oh no, I see it. Right? I see all that. What are these weird little faces in there? That's my little remove doubles thing I did before I made a goof get rid of that if I can all right then delete dissolve edges okay
Okay, here we are. So now, E extrude G X point two. Okay. There's that. <clears throat> do know that there's a whole lot of looping we're going to have to do on this to connect it back there. Just for giggles, let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Let's try something here. B. Escape Z B Yeah, it's easier to do it, to do it this way, I think. So Let's see if we can pull this off. Hmm. What is that? Is there All right. E extrude S Y zero. E escape G Y minus point two five. E escape. G Y minus point two five A W four. Huh, that's not enough vertices, I don't think. Those didn't all line up. Maybe there was. I would have thought there would be more. Before I do that, how about this? Shift S, cursor selected. Now, maybe actually that will, will it? No. This way? Yay. Hooray, it did. Let's do that. 
escape s x zero a a w four hey that's cool all right a whole lot more a whole lot more vertices than expected but I think it's working. A lot more polygons than expected. I better save. What do you think about that? Let's throw a subdivision surface on there real quick. And that. Let's see here some interesting things not <laughs> not those interesting things Some of these, I can see that there is uh, some funny pinching. I should probably see how those aren't like immediately all grabbed. So there's something going on with those. So I'm not gonna touch those yet. See all that? Blip. Something going on there. You know what? Let's investigate. Z, do some of this here. There we go. Doop, 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 doop. Oh, man. X faces. There's still more in there. Two of them side by side in there. Oh no, those are supposed to be there. But what is this? That's weird. What is that? X faces. Well, that's weird. Hmm. E escape. This one to this one, Alt M, last. Now I can select this, subdivide, we can make the faces now. Still pulling. So this one to this one is a face. This one to this one needs a face. That needs a 
face. That needs a face. But there's still plenty in there. And I think that's probably that. There's an edge in there. Probably shouldn't be right there. X, edge. Z, okay. Z, another edges in here. X, edges, Z. Okay. Z, boop, boop. X, oops. X, edges, Z. So, what do we have here? Oh, I see it now. This edge doesn't need to be there. Where is this one? X edges. Boop. That one, and that one, X, edges, cool, there we are. Yep, that's what, that's why all these down here were causing fits also. So X edges, Z, X edges, Z, X edges, Z. Cool, okay. Oop, there's some more up there. Look at that. So now, now the, the hint was when he tried to ring select stuff like that, that it wasn't selecting everything. It would stop. You go, why is it doing that? You know, it shouldn't do that. It should consider it one big long deal. So it is telling you something, whether you're listening or not. Don't know. But it's trying to tell you, hey, there's something going on. What I do? Eek! All right, there we are. So shifty one. I know I just shut hard shaped all those things. Not everything. Whoa, trippy. Shifty one. There's still a problem there. There 
goes. I should probably check to see if anyone's asking any questions. Holy smokes. Sup? Yeah, Robomotion. Wouldn't it be better to use the aluminum block builder stuff, Chris? Why make it flexible when you're going to be printing each for a custom performances? If you want to adjust fit, use block stuff. If you know the performance, then just print the exact part. Like the idea of creating the custom part in Blender for the exact motion, then be able to compile the parts, test the motion, and encode the software program. I, I hear you, Chris. Um, I'm, I'm trying to take a baby step instead of doing some big, huge thing. And why? And, and it's a good question why we're not using MakeBlock. We have all these like, little uh, blue um, MakeBlock things here that are awesome, but the big problem with the make block is, is that they, they don't actually have any, um, they don't have any uh, um, functionality to fit in with servo sizes of all things. I started looking through, I'm like, wait a second, there's nothing here for servos? And so, uh, and so, so you have to have something that the servos can connect into. Now, your point would probably be, okay, well then make, something in Blender that you can then print out that would then allow you to tie it into um, the make block stuff. And um, I would agree with that, <laughs> but I didn't think about that this morning. Um, and so this is kind of how, how I got started uh, with things. And so it's my, my solution of what my 6 a.m. brain came up with. So, um, <clears throat> and I know it probably will be wrong and we'll fix it and change it. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where, where we're at. And actually, I think it's pretty far along now, considering we've just been fooling around with it for an hour or so. It's kind of like a little mini rack mount. I'm sure that you've recognized that, though. It's like a little server cage. All right, so then shift E1. Okay. Alrighty, so now I said before, you know, how the issue was that these were not going to be the right size, precision-wise, um, that, that once you add a subsurface to them, they will change in size, and so they're much, they're too small now. So we need, we need to find out what the scale offset is so that this can fit the four millimeter part. Um, now, I'd say, let's go and select these D's like that, and then shift S, cursor selected, shift, oh, come on. Tab out, shift A, let's just do a circle, dink. And the radius is, let's do it like two point oh, oh two five. And uh, 2.025 is a radius. Why is that? Whoa. 
0 0.2025. 0 0.225. Let's try that. All right. And then 32, I think, is pretty good. Rotation-wise, we're going to need to rotate this in X 90 degrees. We're in the front. So now I can select this here and tab into it. We can go to the front view. That's the front view. I built this backwards. Okay. And um, Z. Now we can select these. And we can scale this, and let, we need to we need to bake in how much scale, I mean how much subsurf we want actually on this. I think three is pretty good. Two is actually not too bad. One is not enough. I'd say three. Let's just do three. And so if we scale this, and I know we're scaling it in all all dimensions at once, which we don't want to do. Um, we basically want to have it just fit right around. That object. Now that object's actually bigger than the four millimeters I measured. And it looks like a 1.25 is a good scale for this. So hit escape, SZ 1.25, and SX 1. Point, escape, SX 1.25. Okay? So each one of those. Should I have done that at the very, very beginning? While making all these, maybe, yeah, probably would have been a good idea. Oops, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Boom, 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 boom. Shift S, cursor selected, S Z one point two five. Print some servers too. I like the idea of creating the custom part in Blender for the exact motion. Then, sorry, probably not the point. Oh, that's all good, Chris. You know, Chris and I, Chris always tells me, you know, do something simple. Use, do the most simple thing first, and then prove it that you need the. More complicated um, solution. <sighs> That's wacky. I goofed. And um, so I know that I'll go through and make things much more complicated maybe than they need to be in the first first point. Um, and you really need to make sure that you're using what it is you build. Because if you don't use it, then it's just nothing. It's just, you know, entertainment. It's not actually functioning and 
pur doesn't have a purpose or a f you know function to it. So you need to make sure that you actually use the stuff you make. Or it gets you to the or or you know it gets you something that you will end up using. Sometimes you end up using things for a different reason than what you thought you would. Save over. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and I probably could, instead of going through and doing all of the, I could say the median point on these things. And so when I select like this, I actually don't have to move that here. I can just do it's the same thing. Now that I'm all done. Um, what's that back there? It's not right. Here we go. Cool. Well, I at least think that it will be easier for it to print this part than to print the other one. No question. Um, is this necessary? Most of the motion is going to, be, going to be going back and forth like this, like this. I might just pull, let's just pull the front off of that, cap it up, and then maybe add it to the back. just so there's a little bit more, you know, spreads the footprint out a little bit. Let's do that so that we can then print this side on the bottom. Okay, let's do that. And, all right. So, B, like that. X, vertices, loop, Z. I'm gonna turn this off so we don't have to look at all that oddness. Okay, there's that. Do we need it back there? I don't know. Is this hot glued down? Is it screwed down? I don't know. I don't think I can, I don't think we can call it done until that stuff's there. At least screw holes so I can screw it into a piece of wood or something. Um, e, escape. Then let's put it, I guess. Oh, uh, let's put two centimeters. G, Y, minus two. Just to give it a little bit of a footprint back there so we can, you know, do that. Don't know if it needs it or not, but anyway, we can, we can do then as doom. Oh yeah, let's do that. E escape G Y minus point five. Uh, G Y minus point two five. Let's 
So some of these here don't need to be Shift D minus one. Shift D one. Okay, I'm going to pull these out. E escape S point five. Now that's not where it's going to be eventually, but it's just a just a way to start. E escape S point five. So let's make a, um, in here, shift A, we're going to set up a cylinder. I think we want it to be height wise, because that's 0. 0.5, that's a location. Depth, 0. 0.5. Um, Radius is 0.25, so it's five millimeters. Eight, I think we're gonna do four. And we're gonna rotate it on Z by 45 degrees. And location on Z is zero. Nope. It's 2.5. Okay. There are no caps on it. Cool. That's great. So then we're going to do something similar here. Shift S, cursor selected. Shift A. A cylinder fifty five rotation forty five cool.
That's what it looks like. Hmm. seem way smaller than these. <clears throat> hmm. I'm just going to say hunch wise. S, X, what do it to? S, Y, two. S, X, two, S, Y, two. Get plenty of space to, to screw into that. Let's look at with it with the tab. Oop. tab. Cool. Okay. Looking right, it is looking correct. So just to just to clarify, so we're gonna print it on this side, so we have less issue with all the infill on those things or printing it out of nowhere on top. Um, <clears throat> as it goes up this way, this edge back here will be harder for it. It might have to provide support in there for that edge. <clears throat> this shouldn't be a problem. It will have to provide support for those holes, but that'll be good. <clears throat> and I believe, I believe it's, Plenty of space in, this, in the printer. I think we can prevent print. Oh, eight inches. So I think it's 210 centimeters or something like that. 21, 210 or 21 centimeters. 210. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I'm learning. Groovy. All right. Well, cool. Um, I can do one more thing. I'll show you that. What time are we at? Oh yeah, I got plenty of time. Um, let me go through and show you how I'm gonna prepare this for, uh, for 3D printing. So, this is ready to be exported out. So, I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna go, I guess the first thing I should do is go to file, user prefs, I'm surprised it's not in here, is uh, there's a 3D toolkit. So that shows up over here then, and you can run a check on it. And it will tell you how horribly you made this. So non-manifold edges, let's tab into this. It says there's 42 non-manifold edges. Well, those all look the center. Look at that. Okay, I didn't see that before. What is that? Looks like something got deleted on accident. 
Okay, so we need to fill that in. Let's turn this off. Select it. Versies. Oop, that's the wrong side. So let's do this. Um, e down here to this M last. Select the edge. So divide it. SC zero. E, do that here, shift S, cursor selected. I don't know why I did that. Why don't I pull it off there? I should have just brought it straight down. SZ0. SZ0, huh. And uh, shift S, cursor selected. SX0, SY0. Okay, so that's there now. Go back to our 3D printing and we can check all. Non manifold edges went down to 28. Well, yeah, that's of course not going to be non manifold as it would be down there. So that's cool. Whatever. Um, bad contiguous edges. Ooh, so bad. <coughs> Intersect faces, where is that at? Period, ooh. Hmm, there's a couple of tries there. Overhang faces, yes, lots of those. Cool, alrighty. I'm not so concerned about the rest of those. So here we go then, tab out, shift S, save it, and then let's go to export and STL, and yeah, we'll just call it that. Um, leave that how it is. It can be a selection only, don't, we don't need to export all the other stuff. Scene unit, ASCII unit, all that stuff, okay, so. And we will call, yep, that's the right thing. Groovy. So now, we're going to Cura. It'll take forever to load. I complain, but it's a pretty amazing software. Ultimaker is a fantastic printer. We, I've had two other printers before Ultramaker, and they were nightmares. Both of them were nightmares for different reasons. One was super, super, super expensive. The other one was just, uh, took so much fiddling, and then things never looked any good. And so the Ultramaker one, fantastic. It's really been a fantastic machine. And it needs to be upgraded. It's an Ultramaker 2. It needs to be upgraded to Ultramaker, Ultramaker 2 Plus. Um, Probably need to do it before they stop actually making that kit available. I don't know when that would be, but I need to do it. I'm not going to download it right now. So file, let's open a file. Let's find it. Oops.
Hmm. That's weird. It's one tenth the size it needs to be. This reminds me of Stonehenge from <laughs> Spinal Tap. Um, all right, so then let's scale this to 1,000%. Are you going to fit? You fit vertically. Just rotate. I can't believe I did that. I held the shift key, whereas if it seems like everyone's doing the, sh the opposite of the shift key now, where it used to be, you used to hold it to constrain it to like certain degrees, but now it's like the opposite. All right. Hum, look at that. I forgot to, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna delete that. Because I forgot to turn on the subsurf. Now, actually open recent, that'd probably come in right just fine. Let's select it, let's scale it, rotate it. Boop. All right. You can give it a shot. Prepare to slice. Mm. All right, so that's going through and slicing up the object into little layers that can lay down in plastic, layer by layer. What does a manifold edge mean, a non-manifold edge? Um, in this case, it has to do with because it was mirrored, it wasn't, the, the, it, it wasn't a complete solid, in, in, in Blender's eyes, it wasn't a completely solid object down the center. Now, it was mirrored, so it was manifold, and so the edge it was telling us was non-manifold is, um, is an edge that we were, we're using to mirror. And if we actually closed that up, it would make the model look incorrect. If we really wanted to get rid of that, uh, uh, get rid of it, we just go back into Blender, and I can just apply, I can hit apply, and it would ap apply this mirror to it, and that edge would no longer be manifold. So, if that answers that. Well, cool. All right, well, this is ready to print then. So, um, anyway, I'll, after I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on an SD card and put it into the printer and print it out and see what happens. So... Anyway, hope you enjoyed the stream today. We got we made some some progress on this puppet mover thing happening, and um, who knows if it'll work or not. You know, you have to just you, you give this stuff a go. You try it out and you look, you see. So, um, but I'm I'm excited to see what the next steps are and and, and uh, see how it goes. So cool. Well, thank you for tuning in. If you like the content, be sure and uh, you know share, like, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Um, to uh, know when it is that we're going live. Um, usually I try and do it in the mornings. Um, sometimes it's, most of the time it's seven o'clock, but I think because of daylight savings time, my schedule has gotten a little bit wacky. So I want to start at six o'clock in the morning. And I, I know the whole world isn't necessarily on uh, daylight savings time or whatever also. So anyway, um, I'm up early here making these things. I hope you'll enjoy them. I'm, I'm making them just to, to get personal projects done, so. Anyway, um, until next time, toodaloo. Boop.